Hello and welcome to a new video. I hope that you are staying safe and healthy and in this video I am painting three trees. Before starting the tutorial I'm going to quickly go over the materials. I am using my Winsor & Newton watercolour brushes, my Montmartre watercolour set, my medium sized Chinese brush, and my Canson 300 GSM Mixed Media Sketchbook. The first thing I did to make sure that all three trees would fit on the page nicely was to divide my page into three even sections with light pencil lines to know how large to paint each tree. In this video I am painting a simple fig tree, a cherry blossom and a weeping willow tree. Starting off with the fig tree, I use my Chinese brush to paint the base layer of the leaves. When painting the leaves, I made sure the brush hairs were flat on the page and with the pointed tip facing outwards. When selecting my greens, I wanted the light to be coming from the top left, so I added yellow to the top left of the tree. Once I was done with the mid and lightest tone of green, then I used my size 3 round brush to add the darkest tone, making it darker unevenly under the mid tones on the left and making it darkest on the bottom right where there would be the most shadows. For the fig tree, you should aim to make the leaves overall shape quite short and wide, like how a mature fig tree would look. I also added a turquoise to make the shadows bluer and added more mid-tones if they were slightly lost after putting in the darker green and blue. Then I left this layer to dry and moved on to the cherry blossom. For this tree, I added a little paint and with a clean wet brush with the excess water removed so it was not dripping wet, I dabbed at the paint to lighten it and to make more light areas, dabbing at the paint to make a more textured blossom pattern. If you think that the blossoms are too light, then you can add paint to the areas you just painted while it is still wet. I did this first but then I felt that it lost the dotted texture that I wanted to give the effect of the small clusters of flowers. So to add the darker speckles, I cleaned my brush and dried it a little on a towel but left it wet enough that it could pick up paint at the tip of the bristles. I picked up quite a bit of my pink and dabbed at the bottom of the different flower clusters that were spaced apart from each other. However, when dabbing with this tree, I kept my brush upright so the tip of my brush is making the speckles. It's good to leave some white space in between your blossom clusters as we are going to add branches peeking through later on. I wanted the light to be coming from the top right as the left turned out darker when I was dabbing away so I made sure that my darkest shadows were on the left. Before continuing I just wanted to say that I love reading your comments. You guys are so sweet and encouraging and I would love to hear more from you. So comment down below which tree was your favourite or you can comment on what you want me to paint more of. And if there's something that I haven't tried out yet, then leave it all in the comments down below. Okay, back to the tutorial. For the weeping willow, this is the same dabbing technique as the fig tree, where the brush bristles are going to be lying flat on your page, where you have a thicker rounded end and a pointed tip forming a teardrop shape. When dabbing, you want the pointed tip to be facing the bottom of the page. When painting these trees, it's really useful to be painting with a Chinese brush as it is thicker and so it will make it easier to paint a larger tree like I am on this A4 page. And to get the texture and brush shape 
which will be harder to get if you used a small round brush. For the weeping willow, I dabbed so the leaves made a rounded top and then separated more to form an uneven line-like pattern to give that draping leaves look that a weeping willow has. Then I dabbed a darker green for the midtones and then an even darker green for the shadows. Admittedly, I wasn't so disciplined with where the light was coming from for this tree. It was meant to be the top left, but I think I needed to add more shadows on the right to make this more apparent. But if you aren't bothered about making it more natural looking, then it's okay to leave it as it is. Then, once the fig tree is dry, I went back to it to paint in the tree trunk. Keeping it thick but short. And in the white areas where I left in between the leaves, I painted in a few branches and added the turquoise again for the shadows of the trunk and the branches and a simple shadow at the base of the tree. Then to add more texture to the tree leaves with my small round brush, I added to the different tones and dabbed to make more leaves on top. Then with the fig tree done, we're going back to the cherry blossom. I did the same thing and painted in the tree trunk. This time the trunk I kept it more smooth and not as thick as the fig tree. Then I added branches connecting to the different blossom clusters and added turquoise for the shadows of the trunk and at the base. And that is the simple cherry blossom done. Now we can finish off the weeping willow, again using my round brush to paint in the trunk and the branches in the white spaces connecting the draping leaf clusters. I also added some branches over the leaves. I later added more yellow with my round brush on the left of the tree and at the bottom of the leaf clusters. And just like I did with the two other trees, I added the turquoise shadow at the base.
and we are done. Thank you so much for watching, I would really appreciate it if you liked this video and subscribed for weekly Saturday videos where I paint flowers, animals, landscapes and other watercolour related videos. And as always, God bless and I'll see you later.